All right, guys, welcome back to the podcast. I am your host, Andrew Ortiz, and it's the long-awaited The Batman Review. Tonight, me and Justin, my disembodied voice, we are going to break down this fucking perfect movie, dude. What a goddamn masterpiece. But before we do, if you're new to the channel, I want to welcome you guys. I want to welcome everybody who's uh, also been supporting. This video will also be on Spotify and Apple Podcast clips on TikTok, IG, so if you guys are sick of looking at my face, we have them on audio platforms as well. And let's just, let's jump right into it, Dustin. We're gonna jump into it. Today's episode will be a little different. Uh, we, we usually don't do full episodes on one topic. Today's video will be about the Batman, okay? So if you haven't seen it, or you're not a fan of the Batman, feel free to check out any other, any other video we do. And, um, yeah, because I know not everybody's into this kind of stuff, so, but yeah, if you if you haven't seen it, uh, save this video, come back to it. But tonight, we're going to jump right in to one of my favorite, I don't want to say, yeah, I'll say it, my One of my favorite comic book movies of all time. Mainly a Batman movie. Where, dude, I, there's so many things I want to start with, but we're going to start off with, so in the beginning... Like, a, I kind of got goosebumps in the beginning when, like, the guitar strumming starts happening. And, like, something in the way starts playing. I don't know if you feel, feel the same way, but, like, dude, that was such a perfect way to start the movie, in my opinion. Like, when the Riddler... Like, the Riddler's entrance, his introduction, and, and Batman's introduction was, like, it was perfect. They both come out of, like, a dark area. Both are, like, in the shadows, like, when the Riddler was in the mayor's house, and then when Batman was on the train, sta the train station... Like, dude. And then, like, the the whole something in the way playing. Like, dude, they, they picked a really perfect song for this movie, by the way. The yeah, guy it was, like, the best song that I you could pick for this movie. <laughs> yeah, dude. The guy who actually did the soundtrack. The soundtrack. I'm a huge fan of him. I don't know how to pronounce his name right, though. So I'm not going to botch his name. But he's done movies like Rogue One, No Way Home. He did this movie. He's done other movies. I've, I saw a list of it. I'm like, wow, dude, he's done all those movies. That's That's amazing. The soundtrack was amazing. Like, dude, it was like its own character almost in the movie. Like, it, it, there's just so many things about this movie that I'm like super a fan of. We're going to actually start off though with, with the actual Batman character. This movie was a love letter to Batman in my opinion. Like this movie, it was mainly a Batman movie. Like, when you see Bruce Wayne in this movie, he's not really Bruce Wayne yet. You know, and I, a lot of people kind of had a problem with that but like dude like i think it's cool to see him evolve into the bruce wayne that we're gonna eventually see in like movie two and three and four if there is a four you know not every batman movie has to be one of those batman movies that's like he's automatically a playboy and he's art he's the best you know like it's cool to see he's in year two year two bruce wayne isn't gonna be like in my opinion, he's not going to... It's cool to see him, like, work towards that. The whole... I, I feel like one of the main points of this movie is vengeance. And each character has their own battle with the word vengeance, in my opinion. Riddler's vengeance. Selina's vengeance. Bruce's vengeance. Or Batman's vengeance. Each handle it a different way, and each end up at a different road at the end. It was actually kind of cool, though, like, at the end when... uh he realizes he has to be more than vengeance for the city. He has to be more than that to give the city hope. But that was actually super cool, man. That's really good writing. Like, the writing was super consistent and it all, like, tied together. Because I hate with, like, some movies, especially recent ones, like, the writing doesn't really connect. Like, there's, you know what I mean? Like, there's, like, they'll do plot points and they'll, like, take, like, storylines in the movie and they don't ever, like, end it. Or they don't tie it off good. Like, that was cool to see, like, the writing of this movie, especially with the vengeance part. But yeah, the, he's basically, this is a Batman movie. We're seeing him be the detective we've always, we've always seen him be. You know, in the animated shows, the graphic novels, the comics, he is the world's greatest detective. We got to finally see that. I didn't like the way that translated, though, in a live-action movie. Like, it was, it wasn't, like anything like terrible or horrible but like it was weird seeing like you know in a realistic setting all these detectives are in a room and then you just have batman walk in <laughs> dressed the way he is acting the way he is it just yeah 
I it wasn't like, like I said, it wasn't like movie ruining stuff, but it was definitely like weird as fuck to like picture that in a real life scenario. They kind of, I think, yeah, you're right. Cause they kind of handled it pretty good. Like they would have some of the, they would have some of the cops say like, what is he doing in here? Yeah. Like you freak or this, you know, that type uh, you, of yeah, stuff. Like that was cool. Here. Yeah. Cause you're right. If they didn't have any of that in the movie. You're right. It's like in a real life setting, this guy's just dressed up as like a bat. Yeah. And it's like walking into a room full of detectives. Yeah. And like you had a crime scene, which you're compromising the crime scene. That's what, I mean, didn't the original commissioner in the movie say that? Like he's compromising the crime scene. What if he's the one who did it? Like, why are you allowing him? So that was cool. Like, you're right. So to combat the the whole a grown man's dress as a bad thing, they kind of did. Acknowledge it. Yeah. Because you easily could be like, yeah, what is he doing at this crime scene? What? So that was cool. And then some of the cops actually like kind of like were scared of him. Some kind of looked like they liked it. So it was kind of like a cool mix. A lot of them hated it, though. Uh, obviously, towards like the middle or like, I would say kind of towards the end end part of the movie when he was in the after the the bomb and like they which by the way they could have took off his mask from that point to the tri to the police station or at the police station yeah i thought that too you thought like uh, during any of those moments they could have just took off his mask and said oh it's bruce wayne so yeah obviously like with a lot of the, with a lot of these movies you kind of have to take that realism thing and like kind of like put it to the back burner because, yeah, there's going to be a lot of nitpicky things you can't no, say know, about this the, movie. The reason why it's so nitpicky is because it, they're selling you the the realism of the whole situation. Which, you know, and speaking of realism, I thought it was hilarious when he uh, jumped from the top of that building and, like, crashed. Yeah. Dude, that was actually kind of funny. What is his suit made of, too, that he survived that? Like, he didn't get any broken bones, no, no like, anything? But yeah, I want to know what his suit is made out of because, like, bro, when he fell and, like, that was, like, kind of jarring to see him just, like... I mean, he did kind of limp and go away. But that was kind of funny. Like, that... that, <laughs> Like, he's in the beginning stages of trying to get this kind of stuff to work. It was just kind of like, okay, like... But I want to go back to the beginning because when he... Uh, I don't know if those guys were dressed up as clowns or they just had, like, clownish kind of makeup on. But that gang at the train station, he packs them out, dude. He, like, obliterates him in my... Like, dude, that was kind of cool to see. Because my problem with the Christian Bell Batman is that his fighting kind of seemed really stiff, right? Like, it was a lot of bows. Which, this Batman does a lot of bows, too. But, like, it just looked better, in my opinion. No, yeah, it did. Looked way better. Like, Ben Affleck's Batman did a lot of good fighting, in my opinion, too. Like, his Batman fought... Like, had good fighting scenes. I think some of his stuff was kind of too animated, though. Oh, Ben Affleck? Yeah, like, um just off the top of my head like batman versus superman like he was kind of like unrealistically again like it's kind of nitpicky to say that but he was just like unrealistically like fighting people he's like jumping across the room and he's like whole like and, a hulk he was like hulk size which i like that about his batman though but yeah he packs them out that that was a good tone center for this movie like it set the tone really well like he completely annihilates these guys and then he just stares down that one last kid as to go tell your friends about me, dog. Go tell everybody that wants to do what you do not to come do that. It was kind of cool because the, the bat signal was also kind of like its own thing where he was basically explaining like the, when the signal goes up, they don't know where I'm at. I could be anywhere and they're scared of that. Like that signal brings fear to those type of people. Yeah, that was dope. Like he might he might not even be near you, but you feel like he might be, so you start running when the signal comes up. Like that was actually kind of cool, dude. They had like their own drug in the movie, wasn't it called the Drop? Like they called them Drop yeah. Heads, which I thought that was kind of cool too. They had that guy who robbed the store dressed up as a Drop Head. I thought that was funny. Was it kind of reminded me of Scarecrow though? No. Yeah, it did. I wonder if that's gonna be something they play into. Like the design of it. Like. He could be a villain in a future movie. That, and, that, like, that he's instead of, like, toxic gas, he's, like, a... I don't know. Yeah, I could see that. That'd be kind of cool. They tie in, like, the drop with him. Or the drop heads. You know, going into Bruce Wayne, though, he wasn't really in this movie, in my opinion. He was, but he wasn't. I actually liked how uh, they had Robert Pattinson's Batman struggle with that. The, he His real self is the Batman. I know, but they acknowledge that too, yeah. which I think is, yeah, it's cool that they were, they were like, they were self-aware on a lot of like, I wouldn't call them flaws, but 
I guess that's the best word I could think of. They the, acknowledged it. The writing was good. Like the writing was good enough to acknowledge it, and you tie in the whole fact that like, hey, we are not, we really aren't seeing a good Bruce Wayne, but it's because that they they do acknowledge why we're not. Like that's not him. He the, he's not going to be the go out and. It kind of reminded me of you a lot. You know what I mean? Not no offense to you, like because like, but like. You, you're not gonna be like the go out in public guy and go to like these events and be like a, I'm I'm Bruce Wayne. You know that that's cool. There's people like that, bro. Like there's really people like that. Like are just really recluse and don't really like to do that kind of stuff. Our Batman doesn't like to do that. I know. What um, Alfred said that in like the after the opening scene. I think he was like, "Oh, is Bruce Wayne gonna make an appearance today?" Yeah, he's like, "You," because he had those people coming over to the house. And they, but they, and then as the movie progresses, he he realizes like, oh, that we kind of need Bruce Wayne too, like to help the city, like how you want to. Batman has to help it, and Bruce Wayne equally has to help it, right? Another good tie-in that I thought was perfect as to why he needs to step up as Bruce is because they were misusing the uh, orphanage fund. Remember, after his dad died, everybody got to dip their hands in that in that billion dollars. Yeah. And but if he was around and like in like in there he wouldn't that wouldn't have happened no one's doing that if he's actually involved and like trying to, so that was a cool tie-in too which again goes into the writing the writing was amazing in this movie like one of the things that and i thought again guys this is all nitpicky stuff because i'm i love this movie by the way so everything i'm sorry if it does sound nitpicky but like the movie is so good you almost have to nitpick it because like if you don't like obviously no movie's perfect but we're gonna get into the riddler so the riddler is the main villain of this movie one of the things i wish they would have done is uh maybe give us a couple scenes with him by himself like see how he interacts by himself and with his notes and maybe he's setting up the next victim and like his thought process i felt like we didn't really get enough of that but other than that i, I didn't mind this version of the riddler I guess there's like a uh, comic incarnations of this Riddler, like in zero year where like he does blow up like uh, vans and cars that caused the flood. And it's kind of cool to see a Riddler. I mean, I didn't think they were going to do the Jim Carrey type Riddler, you know, where he's like one plus one equals two, which I like that Riddler. Nah, I thought the Riddler was fucking fire. Yeah, I like that Jim Carrey Riddler. Don't get me wrong. I, I loved Jim Carrey's Riddler. But yeah, this Riddler was was amazing. I mean, you can you can clearly tell it was it was um. What's the word? You can clearly tell like it was inspired by the Zodiac Killer, the look, right? You can clearly tell by the puzzles and everything else. Like people said that this movie reminded them of the movie Seven, Zodiac, um, like a crime thriller, like a like a detective movie. Like this movie really was that. The yeah, so the Riddler. His overall, I mean, it's kind of funny too, because like when he's being interrogated at Arkham, you for a couple seconds. Now, this is, I don't know if people, people might feel the opposite of this, but I, it kind of seemed like he knew who Bruce was. Like yeah, he knew I that Bruce. That he did until you said something. And then, it, and then I come to realize he starts talking about Bruce in a third person type of way towards the end of that conversation. I'm like, maybe he doesn't know Batman's Bruce Wayne. But then again, he could know and be tricking him. Like, I don't think, but I don't think so. Like, I really think that he doesn't know Batman's Bruce Wayne. He'll probably figure out later on in the trilogy or the movies that they do. But I kind of got the feeling that, like, it was kind of cool, too, because when he's interrogating him and, like, screaming at him and, like, all that, 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 that conversation is actually happening. Paul Dano's acting just shined right there, you know? Like, right there in that moment when he's doing, like, the no, no, no. Like, that was actually, like... Just a really good unhinged person, like someone who feels like the he, the world owes him, you know, and he feels like he's smarter than everybody else, right? But then when he finds someone who's like that can actually outsmart him, it was kind of cool to see that, you know. Other than that, though, like you're right. So another part that I thought was eh, kind of funny, but like they showed him getting arrested in the trailers. Yeah, no, that was what they opened the fucking trailer with. Yeah, so when you watch that, you're like, oh, okay, like, I wonder if he breaks out of prison or he breaks out at some point, like... Because you remember in The Dark Knight, the Joker gets arrested, remember? And then he breaks out, okay? So, like, 
I was thinking like, oh, okay, maybe in the beginning he gets arrested or some stupid shit. Like maybe, like maybe the Riddler's character was going to just like break out and like, but no, they, they showed that scene in the trailer. Like that's kind of like now looking back on it, I'm like, why did you show us him getting arrested? But, but I don't they, think you knew it was him in the trailer, did you? No, because they didn't reveal a face till like yeah, late, so later on in the marketing. I don't think they really fucked up. I just, for me personally though, because when I saw the that scene in the movie, I was like, oh, that's them arresting him. Well, I thought when we first saw the trailer, when they didn't do a face reveal, I thought it was going to be someone else. Like, like that he had set up. Or, yeah, yeah. Like a, yeah, accomplice. Which, again, they kind of ruined it by doing a TV spot that reveals the face because like, now we know it's him getting arrested. I mean, it can still be a lookalike, but... Which he ended up having henchmen in the movie. I don't. I was actually going to ask you. I never asked you about that, but did you like the Riddler having henchmen in this movie? Like, remember at the end, right? Obviously, you, you remember, but no, like... No, but only because, like, nothing came out of it. Yeah, and the only thing that really came out of it was one of the henchmen looking at Batman, which he had seen that guy at the funeral earlier. And he's like, I'm vengeance. And, like, that was Batman's realization. Like, oh, dude, I got to be more than vengeance because I can't just be doing this off vengeance. So, like... That's the only thing that came out of it for me. I didn't hate that he had henchmen. I just hate that they made the henchmen, like, a part of the movie but they served no part in the movie yeah you're right they served actually no they just part. like scared the people in the stadium but like that was about it i mean they did blow up or well, he they didn't blow up the those vans riddler blew blew them up but yeah you're right and like you had mentioned something um amongst our friends earlier but like i kind of don't like when movies like let the villain be a villain you know like let him kill that mayor you know that's the new mayor? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, like that brings more weight to what he's doing into the movie. If you just let the villain be a villain. Yeah, like they shot the mayor. The mayor didn't die. I, that was actually one of the nitpicky things that I that, that I mentioned. Like the mayor straight up. Got she shot, took. She took like a bullet. And, then, and like the very same scene when he like tries to, you know, he lights the flare and like starts leading them away. She was fine. She was just like walking like she didn't just get shot like 30 minutes ago. Yeah, you're right. And that that scene was fire though when he's leading them away with the flare. That was fire, dude. So yeah. like, you know, like I said, like they, they the henchmen like had like no impact. They shot the mayor. The mayor didn't die. They fought Batman. Didn't do anything about that. They didn't like kill any civilians. I yeah. thought they were going to do something at the top of that little scoreboard thing in the stadium, like maybe like make it fall or something. Like nothing happened with the henchmen. It yeah, was you're right. just like, uh, yeah, I don't know. Like no one, nothing really, like if the mayor would have died in that scene, the henchmen being there and causing all that havoc and chaos makes sense. And it's like, it adds, again, it adds more weight to him being able to gather these people here with snipers and start wreaking havoc on the, the people of that town. So yeah, the Riddler was amazing great 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 villain because obviously like when you get an actor like paul dano bro you know you know you're getting a good performance i want to get into catwoman right but there's two different things i want to get into one i want to get into zoe kravitz i guess apparently she had tried out for catwoman in the the nolan series and uh she said that nolan and them said she was too urban for it but also i want to get into the actual character of this movie she makes a comment that like has been kind of it didn't cause too much of a stir, in my opinion, but a lot of people ended up talking about this comment because she, correct me if I'm wrong, what it, it, I don't want to paraphrase it, but she mentions like rich white elite assholes, right? Or she says something along I don't those know lines. Either. Something along those lines, yeah. Now, when she brings that up, a lot of people didn't like that. They were like, "Oh, you're you're bring like you're forcing it into the movie, and you're like, oh, why did she? That took me out of the movie. I don't know if it took you out of the movie, but I want to offer." A different look at it so i wasn't actually bothered by the comments per se like i wasn't bothered by her saying that in the movie but i'm going to be honest with you in real life no one talks like that okay like yes there is people who are affected by like white supremacy and police brutality there is people who are affected by that and there is people who who talk about that kind of survey right? but have you ever been in a conversation with anybody in a real life conversation where someone says something like that. No, that's a whole nother topic, bro. Long story short, no. But like, real quick, like, I can't stand when I overhear people talking and they talk to each other like they're on social media. Like, they, the way they word things, the way they 
talk to each other. It almost sounds like they're communicating through like a comment section. And I'm thinking to myself the whole entire time, I'm like, bro, you, there's no way you talk like this in real life. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. And I'm, I mean, that's the only reason that her comment, you're right. The, so her so comments did take it out of the movie for me. I can agree with you on that because I've literally had that thought in my head like, hey, this doesn't happen in a real life setting. I mean, it doesn't. It, you, I think me and you are both right. I mean, there might be people who do, but they're not real people. Like, they're not actual real, like, in my opinion, they're not real people. Because, like, you're talking like you're on social media. Like, clearly, when you talk to social media, it's different from you in real life, right? So that's why, like, Russell Wilson started to become cringy to me. Because, like, when he talks, it's not him. It's like a, a an image he's trying to portray. I think that you can tell that easier as you get older because you notice it more. But, like, you can tell, you know, when, like, you go to, like, a restaurant and you hear a waitress speak to somebody? Yeah that's what it's like like that's you it's not a real human interaction it's what would you call it it's a it's brand. almost like some npc type shit yeah it's like uh it's like a fake personality communicating with like another fake personality yeah i hate that shit so the, the line didn't bother me right so like a lot of people were like it ruined the movie it didn't ruin the movie man can we be real about it? Like, it didn't it took, fucking ruin I don't the, think movie, it ruined the movie either. But the only reason it took me out of the movie is because it just like came out of nowhere, in my opinion. It, it was did. The it same also problem did. I had with like Texas Chainsaw Massacre. It's just like a lot of the. I wasn't mad that like the comments seemed woke. I was just mad that like the woke comments seemed to come out of nowhere. It did come out of nowhere, and again, and no until, one really like, talks couple, like that. Yeah, and up until a couple days ago, I thought the main boss dude was like brown. I don't know what kind of brown. I personally thought he was like Indian or something, but like. I didn't know that he was like an Italian dude. So oh, when Car she was, Carmine, Carmine. Yeah, so when yeah. she was like, "Oh, these rich white elites," I was like, "Your father? He's not even white." Your father? Yeah, that's another reason. That that's her dad. So like, he can't really be white, huh? I don't know. I didn't think the dude was white. So I was like, "Hey." No, like that would mean her mom is black, and then he's yeah. Not, yeah. Something like so that. that's why so she's yeah. She's like, "Oh, rich white elites." So I was like, "Wait a minute, the dude she's talking about isn't even white." They just kind of threw that in there just to throw that in there. That's why it, it, it just took me out of the movie when she said it because like it just didn't make sense at the time. Also, you bring up a good point about something you said earlier. Now I'm dressed as a bat. Okay, you're dressed up as a cat, and <laughs> we're like in costume in real life, right? We're in costume. I don't think she was dressed up as a cat though. I think she was just in a leather suit and then like her. Okay. I'll give you that. Kind of just had like little flaps at the top. I'll give you that. I'm dressed up as a bat, and you're dressed up in a burglar outfit. We're talking to each other, and you're like these rich white elite assholes. Hey, I'm dressed up as a bat. <laughs> He's white. Yeah, and I'm white. Yeah. So and I'm rich. You know, if Wouldn't you're that Bruce be Wayne. Funny if Batman was just like, sorry for being white. Yeah. He just sounds like a white guilt Bruce Wayne. <laughs> yeah, white guilt Bruce Wayne. That'd be hella funny, though. There's nothing wrong with that either. It's just like, can we be real about this for a second? I'm, I'm dressed up as a bat. And you're bringing that up, like again. I didn't have I didn't have a problem with what she said, right? It's just that no one in real life talks like that to each other, right? I have a I have a lot of friends who, who are into that type of stuff, like activism and like you know trying to like bring awareness to things, but they don't talk about that in our day to day, like in real life conversations, right? Mm -hmm. You know, like I don't have like none of my friends are like, hey, did you donate to this charity today? Like they don't they don't do that, bro. I also want to get into her comments where she said the. That Nolan and them said she was too urban. Like, again, and the people are mad about that. People are like, oh, you're race baiting. You're Why are you bringing that up now? Like, you're just trying to bring race into it. And it's like, bro, she probably sat on that for so long. That probably really did fuck with her. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. That that's not, that's not really cool to say to people. You know, like, oh, you're too urban. So, like, she probably sat on that. It probably, like, really, like, fucked with her. And now she feels comfortable saying it. I don't have a problem with her saying that either. There's a lot of YouTubers who are making videos like saying she's race baiting and like trying to like, go at her for that. I mean, if Nolan felt comfortable seeing it, like he should feel comfortable having people. He should feel comfortable with the backlash. I mean, like you like. I I, I didn't really see. Has he said anything about it? I, yet? I haven't heard about it. No, no but it's either. it's basically like saying like, hey, you're too black for this role. I know. I know. Yeah. I know it's not. But what else do you mean by urban? I think what he was trying to say is like modern and I, maybe opinion. he was i'm not trying to say he's racist by the way for anybody who's watching i'm not trying to insinuate that nolan's racist here but i mean like i think he was trying to say modern and then ended up saying urban and kind of like just fuck 
you know, fucked himself over. Because it's my favorite version of Catwoman, and I feel like, damn, like, it sucks that we didn't get to see her in, like, the Nolan movies. But again, maybe she wasn't right for those movies, you know? So who knows? I But she, she killed it in the role. Absolutely loved it. Another villain, though, he did show up at the end. And a lot of people, this was probably the most talked about part of this movie. And a lot of it wasn't good. A lot of people didn't like this one, man. What did you think about the Joker, bro? I know you said you didn't like it. Yeah, I didn't like it. Like, you really didn't like it. Mm -mm. Now, is it because we didn't really get a look at him? So is it because of his voice? Or like, what, what are, what are uh, we... The voice was... The voice was okay. Was it the laugh? Yeah, it was the laugh. Like, the laugh, in my opinion, was, was like, I already did it. I already wasn't feeling it from, like... Did like, you okay. know it was the Joker like right away, or when did you yeah, know it was just the Joker? Yeah, mentioned clowns. I was like, okay, they're trying to hint that this is the Joker talking. So then, like his voice was like, it was okay, it wasn't good, but it wasn't bad. I mean, that would have been crazy if we saw Willem Dafoe in that cell. I know, dude. That would have been insane. And then, like, I know what they're trying to do with like his like skin, the way it looked and stuff. But I, I just wasn't feeling the way it looked. I just, I, I know what they were trying to do. I just don't think they hit it. And then the laugh, I was like, yeah, no. I guess there's supposed to be a deleted scene coming out soon where Batman goes into Arkham to try to profile the Riddler mm -hmm. and him and Joker are talking, right? And so he's like, oh, it's almost our anniversary. Oh, because, you know, in year one, he caught him. Mm -hmm. But he's not really the Joker yet. I guess that's what Matt Reeves was saying. Or he was implying that this isn't actually the Joker yet. He grows into the Joker. Yeah. Like I think he, me and you talked about yeah, that. Yeah, he was born with, like, a birth defect. I'm not saying that, like, you know... You know when people are like, oh, Robert Pattinson. No, I'm not watching this Batman. Yeah. Fuck this if it's Robert Pattinson. I'm not saying like that. I'm not shitting on it. I'm just saying from what I saw, which was like yeah. the couple minutes of the movie, I did not like what I saw. So it could if be he good. Grows into the, a yeah. yeah, if uh, yeah, that if it grows into a cool Joker and whatever, whatever, then fine. But those couple minutes, yeah, that was a yikes. Yeah, hopefully they work on the laugh and hopefully they work on like the, like the I don't know. Cause Why do they try to do that too? By the way, that's so weird. That like whenever they they did it with Jared Leto, they did it with fucking um, this guy. Like when they try to like sell you on the Joker, they just try to sell you on like the laugh. Well, because the laugh is the I, most important part. Yeah, I know yeah. it's his identity, but it's like I don't know. Because if the laugh isn't good, like you're yeah, you're gonna lose so. a lot of people, in my opinion. Like, like obviously Heath Ledger's Joker, like it isn't. It's not the ideal Joker look, but the laugh was like, oh, okay. The acting, oh, okay, right? Leto's was like, ah, ah. Yeah, no, his is the worst by far. Ah. Of like any variation of the Joker I could think of, Jared Leto's was the worst when it came to that. It also seemed like Leto tried too hard. Like, Leto was just like, like, uh, oh, Harley. Like, I, I don't know. Like, it wasn't bad, but it, it was, it's the worst out of the Jokers I've seen so far. But yeah, I... A lot of people debated that. They also debated, and if you didn't know this watching it, but Colin Farrell is the penguin. Like you, if you watched this and didn't know that, you would be like, "What? He's no, the actually, penguin?" I actually didn't know that, and probably wouldn't have unless. Um, I think I was the one that told you, right? Wasn't no, I like, "Oh, Colin I watched, Farrell." I was watching the DC fandom like last year, and they were, t you know, Robert Pattinson, Zoe Kravitz, Colin Farrell, and when they said Colin Farrell, they put it like a screenshot of like the penguin. Uh -huh. I was like, wait, what the fuck? That's Colin Farrell. <laughs> he, he did just, amazing. Like, up doesn't look like it. Doesn't look like him. Doesn't talk like him. He's like, I don't know about no Goyle. I don't know about no Goyle. In like the scene where uh, they're trying to take his money. And then like the penguin's like, hey, Patsy, you want to come? And then all of a sudden like the, the car, by the way, was its own character. When the cars are like, do, 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 and like just in there like rumbling and like everybody do that. The, that, if I'm a villain and I see that. Like the car just like blue lights, like the flames. Yeah, no, that and like, scene was the best part of the movie, in my opinion. That was one of the best Batman car scenes I've ever seen. Especially since we saw it in Dolby. So like the sound, the vibration, oh, the, I bet it was... the, just the theater in general, that scene, like that shit was so like, yeah, it was like the best part of the movie. I think opinion. one of the best shots in the movie came when like uh, the penguin's car flipped and, you know, because Bruce's car is coming out of the fire. And when his car flips and he's just like laying there upside, which by the way, that would have killed anybody who's normal that car flipping mm -hmm. anybody else would have died like literally anybody else in that car crash would have fucking died sorry i, I know that i don't want to get taken out of the movie here and it's nitpicky but when he's sitting there upside down and he's looking over and like batman's walking towards him in the fire with rain 
in the music that's playing, that is one of the best shots I have ever seen. Like yeah, kudos, I told bro. Ben it was on some like Michael Myers shit. Yeah, that was yeah. That's a good way to explain. It. That's one of the best scenes I have ever seen. Did you did you catch any of the clues like the hush? Like the 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 reporter yeah, had the name well, Elliot and like Elliot's the hush and the no I I feel like I saw the hush though and just like subconsciously like thought of it but just like didn't think of it until you said something because when you said something I knew what you were talking about I just didn't catch it in real time during my my watch of it I don't know if there was any other Easter eggs I can point out per se there's clearly gonna be a sequel and we've talked about this before we made a video a couple weeks ago about Mister Freeze but do like after seeing this movie and after doing that video with me, do you see Mr. Freeze being in any of the sequels? No. How do they make it I work? I think they made I I don't know, dude. I think they made this movie like way too realistic, which is which is why I like it though. It's like a real like it just doesn't seem like a superhero movie but it is, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like there's not it's not like because uh, how would you ever introduce like Superman or Wonder Woman in this universe? Like if they I, ever do that, how do you do that? I think that's why a lot of people like the the Nolan movies though, is because it, it seems like just like a real. It's not like, you know, the previous Batman movies where like you know you see a dude in a, a neon green suit, and Mister Freeze has his outfit, and you know that type of stuff. Because it seemed it was probably cool back then, but it aged terribly, and it seems corny when you watch it now. Yeah. So that's why when you see movies like this and the Nolan movies, it seems like just in real life. I don't know. That's kind of why I think a lot of people like it. I mean, if uh, if Matt Reeves can make it work, why not? But like, I was just watching. So on HBO Max, they have a show called Harley Quinn, which you should watch by the way. Like they they cuss, there's blood. I mean, dude, it's like literally super rated R, and it's a cartoon. I love it. Poison Ivy's a character in that show. And I was like, how would Poison Ivy work in this Batman? Mm -hmm. Like, there's certain characters I'm thinking like, okay, Mr. Freeze, Poison Ivy. How do you get a woman who controls plants to make sense in this movie, in this world? You, I don't think you could. And like, Mr. No. Freeze, I, I guess you could have a guy, like a scientist who like has weapons that shoot ice out of it. But how does that look on that movie? That's what I'm saying. You might have been able to do it with like Ben Affleck's Batman. Because, like, that world is set up for that. I don't think this one is. You could almost make, like, a really... Like, if the sequel does have Mr. Freeze, you could almost make it, like, a kind of like a, a... Like a horror Christmas type feel. Where there's a lot of snow in the movie. Like, make the color theme blue. Like, a lot of dark blue, light blue. Have Mr. Freeze be, like... I don't know. That's just my... That's And they could do... I know they kind of were hinting at the Court of Owls with the whole... You know the Arkham's and the Wayne's like stuff. Yeah, I think they like, should do that kind of stuff. I wouldn't worry about like all the poison ivy. What do you think a scarecrow would freeze. work in a sequel? Yeah, I think so. If they do it right, like yeah. what I mean, you're saying what maybe it doesn't. It could be toxic gas, but like I wouldn't go like hella overboard with it. What about a what about a killer croc? Would a killer croc or a Bane work in this type of world? I think Bane would, because they made it work with the Nolan movies. They kind of people think that uh, Batman put venom into his body. I think it was adrenaline, by the way, but. That could be like a little nod towards Venom, which you could end up making a version of that be for Bane. It just sucks is now, now that I'm thinking about it with you, like there's a lot of villains you probably aren't going to be able to do. Yeah, I think they could do like... When Solomon Grundy's not going to be one you can do. But he's just going to live in the sewers and be this big hulking guy that, 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 you know. Yeah. Deathstroke you could do, but he's not really a Batman villain. He's more like a Teen Titans villain. I mean, I mean, I'm just a clay face. Could you? I don't know if you could. You know, man bat. You're not gonna be able to do man bat because he's literally a bat. So I mean, but oh, I was actually. Let's go back to the Joker. So if if they once they show him more, are we get? Do you think we get another Harley Quinn? And if so, do you think we're not gonna have Margot? Obviously, but do you think That'd it'd be, be cool. smart to bring in a Harley Quinn for this Joker, or do we like, yeah. hey, for this time, let's just? I don't see why not. That'd be kind of. So overall, so overall, the movie from the score, the writing, the directing, the acting, the everything, I loved it, dude. Like, it was so awesome. Like I, I was like, I was busting pause. I was busting at the seams, waiting to talk to you guys about it, because these guys waited like a week and a half to see it. So like the whole time, I was just like, I would, I would have to message Ben like, hey, since my brother wants to wait a wait a an f and week to see it, like I'm gonna have to message you and let's just talk about it, you know? Yeah, the movie. Like I said, guys, one of the best Batman movies I've ever seen. 
I can do a ranking next week. Yeah, like next week we'll do a ranking for this movie. And we'll we'll rank we'll rank all the Batman movies and I, I cuz I want to take a week to actually like, you know, make like a really good list. I don't want to just like I don't want to spitball right here. I easily could probably come up with one, but I'm not going to. But yeah, that's the ne that's tonight's episode, guys. If you've seen the Batman, comment below. Let us know where you where you rank it, and let us know if you even like the movie. If you don't, I'm actually very curious because I've never met someone who actually d dislikes it. If you really dislike it, like I'd be interested in a why. Like, hey, like, what did you what did you not like about it? But yeah, uh, before I go, for the people on Spotify and Apple Podcasts, thank you for your continued support. If you guys are, you know, if you into what i do i am on tiktok like three times a day i post the clips from here to tiktok we're almost at ten thousand followers on tiktok which that's the minimum requirement for like the paid partner program so i'm like really close to like starting to make some serious steps into this so go follow me on tiktok guys it's the same i have the same handle for like twitter instagram it's andrew underscore mellow 15 go follow me there and let's let's make history with this channel you know, when we first started this, I didn't think this would be what it is today. We're, we're making really good steps, in my opinion. So, go follow me there. Till next time, guys. Peace.